Calendar integration is one of the best tools you have available to transform good voice agents into useful ones. Prompt, voice quality, and latency are very important. We have found that business owners actually care way more about good calendar integration into their existing systems than anything else, including the voice. Today, I'll show you the exact system that we use at Amplify Voice to ensure our clients' voice agents always book appointments into any calendar system, never double book, and always check availability correctly. You can have the best prompt, but if the calendar integration breaks, then the user experience breaks. The key insight here is understanding your client's systems and sales process. Don't just ask, do you use Google Calendar? Instead, ask, walk me through your sales process from start to finish. That is what reveals the critical integration that your voice AI agent needs to address. So by the end of this video, you'll have a bulletproof calendar integration system that works across Google Calendar, Microsoft Outlook, and even integrates with your client CRM. First, I'll show you why Cal.com is the best tool for your client's integration strategy. Then I'll walk you through our step-by-step -step process for integrating retail with Google Calendar and Outlook. Next, we'll explore CRM integration for a more complete solution. And finally, we'll look at the common pitfalls of calendar integration with voice AI. Let's dive into it. Hey, I'm Alejo, co-founder of Amplify Voice, where we build voice agents for real estate and digital marketing. If there's one thing I've learned is that the difference between a demo agent and a production ready solution usually comes down to these critical integrations. So if you're interested in working with me, you can click on the second link below and I'd love to talk about creating a custom system for you. And if you wanna dig in and build it for yourself, you can join our school community where you'll access all the templates in this video. Let's first understand what makes a good calendar integration. When your voice agent is booking appointments, it needs to check real time availability across multiple days, create new appointments, consider buffer times between meetings, respect working hours and block time, communicate confirmation details back to the prospect and the client, and handle messy date and time zone formatting. Most implementations fail because they only focus on point one and two. That's why we use retail and cal.com and retail already comes with a native integration to cal.com. You see these two functions, book appointment and check calendar availability, retail already built them for you. Now I'm gonna show you how to tailor them for your use case. I removed the functions for now to show you from scratch. And this is the exact same process we follow with clients. So we'll go to cal.com and we will go click on get started to create a new account for them. We will continue with email so the integration steps are easier. So you create a username. We usually use our client's email so, there is, so it's easy for them to log in and create a password for them so we can both log in. Create an account. Now you verify your email, you click sign in, and now you're in. Number two, we will create an event type. Choose a title for your meeting and how long it's gonna last, click continue. And now you've created your first event. Number three, we're going to go into the event and change some settings. First for availability, you can choose the default nine to five or modify it. You can go to availability in order to do that. If we go to limits, you'll see buffer time for before and after the event. Meaning if the event lasts 30 minutes and you have 15 minutes of after event buffer time, it means nobody can book for 15 minutes after the event ended. For example, if we have a buffer time after the event of 15 minutes and there's already an appointment at 1 p.m., it means that nobody will be able to book until 1.45 p.m. Choose a minimum notice of how far in advance people can book. We usually do at least eight hours, usually 12 hours. Let's click save and we can move on. When a user books and shows up in your client's calendar, what should the title of that event be? In this case, the default looks good enough. We'll scroll down and see some booking questions. It is important to turn these off so your voice agent doesn't get confused and cause errors during booking. So all the voice agent will take care of is the name, the email address, and the time of the booking. Now we can move to step four, which is connecting your Cal.com to your voice agent. So let's see the voice agent. We'll click on add and this default function book on the calendar. That's the one we want to use. And there's two things that you'll need from Cal.com, the API key and event type ID. Let's start with the API key. Let's go to cal.com. We'll go to settings and then in developer API keys, we'll create a new one, save and copy. And we're just gonna paste it right here. Event type ID, this one gets people confused. It certainly confused me when I first used cal.com. It's this number right here in the URL 
it's that one right there at the top. Okay, cool. That number is the one we're going to paste here. And then time zone, if you're only working in one time zone, if your client is only working in one time zone, you can set the time zone here. Otherwise, if it's going to be a flexible time zone, you can remove it. You see how this is optional. So the voice agent will take care of asking the user for the right time zone. We're going to click save. And we're going to do the exact same thing for check calendar availability. I'm going to go back to the book on the calendar, copy that API key, add check calendar availability and see how he asks me the same things. And now I need the event type ID again, which is right here. Bam and paste. I'm going to remove the time zone and save. Now we've completed step four, which is connecting Cal.com to your voice agent. Let's move on to step five, which is actually integrating with what your client uses. For this tutorial, I'm going to show Google Calendar, Outlook Calendar, and leave you with a bonus for connecting to a CRM, in this case, HubSpot. It's very easy. We're going to click on Browse App Store, Google Calendar, Details, Install App. And this is going to simplify your life and your client's life, which is I can just copy this link, send it to my client, and then they just connect the calendar and then they log in. We're going to click continue. Yes. And now my client's Google calendar is already connected to cal.com. Very simple and very powerful. You can even add other calendars. So when you check availability, it's giving you times that are open. So you prevent double bookings. So we're going to install a new calendar app, go to outlook calendar. And we literally did this yesterday with a client install. I sent him this link. And he was able to sign in and connect his calendar automatically. So we accept the permissions and there you have it. It's that easy. And now we have two calendars integrated and we can choose which one to add events to. So let's go back to event types. We'll choose the event that we created, go to advanced again, and now we'll see a new option, which is which calendar do you want to add events to? In this case, I want to stick with my Google account to add events to, but also check Outlook for any conflict. We're going to click use add to calendar email as the organizer. We're going to choose user for checking for conflicts. But if you want to choose some sub calendars and not others, we can choose to do that with event type. Don't forget to click save. And now we're set up. But I also promised you a bonus, which is connecting the CRM, in our case, HubSpot, which you can see right here, along with a bunch of other options and way more options if you go to apps by clicking add and just signing in. Trust me, everyone, it does not get simpler than this. Again, you send this link to your client such that when they paste it, they can sign into their HubSpot themselves, which is a safer way because they don't have to share any credentials or passwords with you. Now that I'm signed into HubSpot, it'll send me back to Hikala.com to choose the event that I want to link. In this case, it's the discovery call. I'll click save and then the integration is finished. How do you know the integration is finished? Click back into the event, go back to apps, and you'll see HubSpot at the top turned on. You can have the best voice agent in the world, but real businesses don't work on Google Sheets. You are going to get the question of, can you integrate into my CRM? And if you go to apps and scroll down, you'll see every integration and CRM and calendar type that you can connect cal.com with. Now that we're logged into HubSpot, when I go to the event type and apps, you'll see HubSpot connected at the top and it's on. This means that when my voice agent in retail does appointments, it'll link back to HubSpot and Google Calendar and Microsoft Outlook. But we're not done because this is where you level up your implementation. The key is in the prompt and in the function description. Remember how I mentioned that the difference between a good voice agent and a useful one is understanding the sales process of your client. Let me show you what that looks like. I've gone through this prompt structure in different videos, and I'm going to leave a video up above where you can really dig into the details and nuances of this prompt structure. It's very flexible and customizable. And in this case, we're customizing it for appointment booking. So we're going to have more details about how to book appointments in specifics, in stages, and in example interactions. So when I understand my client and their sales process, I can create a really good first line. And that first line sets the tone of how smoothly the appointment booking will go. For example, hey, first name, I'm Saya, the AA agent from Amplify Voice. By the way, this call is being recorded for training. You inquired about our AI voice solutions. I'm calling to set up your intro call with 
role and contact owner. These are dynamic variables that I talk about at length in the video, every retail setting you must know. So this is going to be replaced by our dynamic variables, chief relationships officer, page, just like here to see if we're the right fit for each other. Page has some availability before 5 p.m. Eastern on weekdays. When works for you? Then the user suggests some time and we're going to jump down here, shares preferred date and time for booking. So let me see. And then you share the outcome of the book appointment function. If that appointment time is not available, the agent will jump here. So no worries. Let me check availability again, then use the check calendar availability function. But the reality is that this is not enough. There's so many edge cases. So we're giving instructions, not only in the stages, but also in specifics, particularly here. If the book appointment returns the time is unavailable, use the check calendar availability function to check availability within a wide time range. You will receive many available options, but you should offer only three options max phrase in natural human speech, such as page has availability on Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern time at 3 p.m. or Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. Never assume that a time is available without first using either the book appointment or the check calendar availability functions and ensure you always book in the future. This one seems obvious, but again, human conversations are very nuanced and LLMs are not always perfect at capturing that nuance. So for example, if the user says Tuesday or this Tuesday, you should check next Tuesday, meaning the soonest Tuesday in the future. And we're also giving it the time in the time zone that we care about Eastern time. So these details in the specific section, the clarification of when to use each function in the stages, and the example interactions all reinforce or coherent for the LLM to get a better understanding of when to use what. For book appointment, this description works very effectively. When users ask or agree to book an appointment, book it on the calendar. The time parameter should be a full date in the future. The time right now is this. And I'm clarifying in Eastern time because we're working in Eastern time. The name parameter should be first name. Answer with let me see. We are doing outbound calls with this agent. So we have this information, things like the email and the first name. If you want to see the best way to capture that data and also impress a prospect during a demo, I'll leave that video linked above. So we're leveraging that information that we've already collected. Then for check calendar availability description, we have use this function when you need to get available, uh, available slots to offer the user, then provide up to three available slots max. Always check for slots in the future. Right now is current time, Eastern time. And importantly, the start time and end time parameters should be a full date in the future and end time should always be after start time. I know this sounds obvious, but we are protecting for the edge cases in which the LLM can get confused. So what we do with this and what you will have uh, when you get this agent template in the school community is this description is already going to be in there. The important part is not that you copy this, is that you understand it, how to change it in order to satisfy your client. I'm going to paste this one as well and check calendar availability. Bam. And this works super reliably. It's from here now. Okay. Awesome. Now you have a voice agent that reliably books appointments in your client's calendar and also connects to their CRM. Okay. Let's test it out and see how the integrations work. We set up our default dynamic variables for this test which if you're doing outbound, you've already collected this information. And if you're doing inbound, you can collect the information during the call, like the first name and the email. And yes, I know capturing email is hard, but I'll do a video deep diving into how to capture emails effectively in the future. So stay tuned for that. So subscribe below so you get that notification. We're going to save this and test the agent. Hello. Hey, Alejo. I'm Saya, the AI agent from Amplify Voice. By the way, this call is being recorded for training. Um, you inquired about our AI voice solutions. I'm calling to set up your intro call with our chief relationships officer, Paige, to see if we're the right fit for each other. Paige has some availability before 5 p.m. Eastern on weekdays. When works for you? Uh, let's say tomorrow, 3 p.m. Let me check if Paige is available tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern. Let me see what times Paige has open tomorrow, and I'll give you a couple options. Page is available tomorrow between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. or from 4.30 to 5 p.m. Eastern. Would any of those times work for you? Yeah, actually, 4.30 works perfect. Thank you. Great. I'll book you for tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. Eastern with Paige. You're all set. As the last step, please accept the invite you just received in your email. 
Paige is looking forward to talking with you. Any other questions before I go? We're good. Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Okay, awesome. So I should see that come in 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, there you go, 4.30 p.m. America, New York. Awesome. And now if I check the HubSpot, I should go to meetings. And then there we go. Yeah, uh, America, New York. They, I am in Buenos Aires, so it's one hour later. But yeah, this is 4.30 p.m. Eastern. And there we go. Now it's connected to my uh, CRM. It's connected to my Google Calendar and my Microsoft Outlook. Now let me share one bonus, which is common pitfalls to avoid. Number one is time zone complications. In the US, there are four different time zones and whether somebody's one place or another, it means a different time. So you can't just blindly book. The solution is ask the user or tell the user. We prefer the approach of telling the user, hey, it's gonna be 5 p.m. Eastern time. And most people are used to just doing the math in their head of what that means to their time zone. Or you can ask the users if you actually have people from all different time zones. When you ask for the user's date and time that they like to book, you also ask for the time zone. Number two is forgetting to leave buffer times in between appointments. And as I showed you, when you go to limits, you'll be able to see the before event and after time buffer time. Number three is the awkward back and forths. And this setup really helps with that because there's only really meant to be one, max two back and forth. The user proposes a time, it's either available or not. If not, it checks a calendar availability, and then the maximum necessary checking availability happens twice. Then the voice agent most likely provides a time that works for the user. Number four is not testing edge cases, like when there's no time availability or no times work for the user. And this is what I call failing gracefully. It's very important for voice agents, and the prompt actually takes care of that. So when there is an issue, this prompt and this prompt structure are really good at handling it naturally so that the user experience doesn't get degraded even if they're not able to book. Remember, the important part is good user experience and making your client happy. So something like we'll follow up with you with new available times is much more helpful than continue to have back and forth and back and forth about availability. Remember that the key insight is understanding your client's actual processes, actual workflows. So don't just ask, do you use Google Calendar? Instead, ask, could you walk me through your sales process? And that is what reveals the key integrations that your voice agent needs to address. So there you have it. A complete system for calendar integration with retail that actually works in production. So to recap, number one, once your client shares their sales process with you, Cal.com will give you the flexibility you need to satisfy what they need. Number two, I showed you how to integrate your client's Google Calendar, Microsoft Outlook, and any other calendar that they use. Number three, we explored easy CRM integration options like HubSpot and many others. Number four, we dove into the prompt that makes your voice agent book appointments effectively. And number five, we looked at the common pitfalls that makes calendar integrations not ready for production and how to make them ready for production. The biggest takeaway is that understanding your client's processes will allow you to deliver real value. It's not about how good your voice agent is, it's about how well it fits into their existing processes. So if you want us to build this solution for your business, check out the work with me link below. And if you want the template of the agent that you just saw, you can come to our school community to get it for yourself. Before I go, I have a question for you. What CRM or calendar or other integration would you like to see next? Drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and remember to never stop prompting.